Welcome back, Cannonites, for a different flavor of cannon fodder. If you've been following either this channel or cannon fodder itself since inception, you'll remember that cannon fodder actually began as a rather small section of the community update, or, as it was called back then, the Halo Bulletin. Now it seems that for a time at least, Cannon Fodder is returning to its old home as 343, quote, stokes the fires of new narrative engines and begins the process of crafting Halo's next adventures and mysteries. If I'm interpreting that correctly, that basically means Grimm's workload has increased just a bit. Cannon Fodder was always his pet project, not his primary duty at 343, so if 343 is gearing up for something or some things, this move makes a lot of sense. So anyway, with all that out of the way, let's see what's being delivered this week. Be sure to stick around to the end for an update of my own in the wake of these changes. Until then, let's dive in. We start with a look at what fans can expect from the San Diego Comic-Con. In short, a ton of exclusives, signings, and a couple panels. The big panel this year is titled Halo Wars 2, Know Your Enemy. The panel will feature Kiki Wolfkill, Frank O'Connor, Dan Ayub, and Kevin Grace of 343, Dave Wilson of Blur, and Halo newcomer Erika Soto. An early description of the panel talked about John DiMaggio, best known as the voice of Marcus Phoenix, playing a pivotal character for Halo Wars 2, though that mention has since disappeared. At the time, it led many to believe that he might be playing Atriox, given that DiMaggio voiced several brutes in Halo 3 and Halo 3 ODST, though the truth remains unknown. A Dark Horse Comics panel will also feature Frank O'Connor. Whether or not any of these panels will be live-streamed is anyone's guess, though it's not something Comic-Con has done historically. It's usually a month or more wait for the panels to release, so the best us at home will be able to hope for until then is to keep an eye on Twitter and big Halo and gaming news sites for an overview of one or both panels. Moving forward, we have another Halo KI crossover. Killer Instinct is introducing a new mode called Shadow Lords, which, along with a host of other features and additions, will have a sort of astral pet known as Guardians. Halo will have their own Guardian in the form of a monitor known as Fractured Ward. Though created for KI, he does have his own backstory that I think we can consider, at the very least, semi-canonical. Fractured Ward is a powerful AI construct, created by the long-vanished forerunners to aid warriors on the battlefield. While assisting in the defense of a vital teleportation array, Fractured Ward was thought lost in the facility's catastrophic destruction. The battle against Gargos has widened the cracks between worlds, releasing Fractured Ward from eons of lonely wandering in a crumbling refuge hidden between dimensions. Built to defend and protect thinking life, Fractured Ward has identified this planet's heroes and works with them to heal fractured breaches in reality caused by demonic incursions. I'd love to know more about what sort of facility Fractured Ward was defending, and what else he may have done before disappearing into the space between spaces. The next section is a few pressing cosplay questions from the 405th, Halo's dedicated cosplay community. The first asks whether or not armor seen in Halo 4 but not in Halo 5 could work with the unique tech suits seen in Halo 5. The short answer is yes, thanks largely to the modular nature of the Gen 2 platform. The second question asks whether suits that were seen in Halo 4, but have yet to appear in Halo 5, are still considered in production. Grimm explains that although some sets do not appear in Halo 5, they are still considered viable and in production. The third question is about armor skins. To quote, are only official skins permissible, or would Spartans adopt their own style? According to Grimm, what we see in the game should assume to be only a small sample of the range of customization options available to Spartans, official or personal. The fourth question asks whether full customization like we saw in Halo 4 is canon. The short answer is yes. Halo 5's helmet and body customization is a restriction of the game, not the universe. The fifth question asks, given that Mark 4 and Mark 5 have seen ports to the Gen 2 system, could one expect other Gen 1 systems to make the transition? i.e. could one, in a canonical sense, use a Gen 2 tech suit with Halo 3 or Reach armor sets. Grimm explains that while not all Gen 1 systems have been fully ported to the Gen 2 line, it should not restrict cosplay options. And the final question asks whether alternate visor colors could canonically be used with older Gen 1 variants. Remember, the different visor colors seen in the Halo games aren't just pretty colors. They are meant to be unique variants suited to different mission parameters. According to Grimm, it's certainly possible to mix and match newer visor variants with older armor variants. That does it for the Q&A and brings us to the final section today, the winners of the Halo Hackathon. The Hackathon was a contest where people were challenged to take advantage of the public API for Halo 5, and people came up with some very interesting uses of the available data. From classic heat maps to a sort of online theater mode and so much more, be sure to check out the projects on Halo Waypoint. 
And that wraps up Cannon Fodder for this week and brings me to my own sort of updates. With Cannon Fodder reintegrating with the community update, I expect that the content in the coming weeks will be fairly light. While I still intend to report on it, there will likely be a lot less to discuss, meaning I have to get off my lazy ass and provide some real content of my own, rather than riding Grimm's coattails. So, going forward, I am aiming to get one unique video out per week, no matter what that is. Currently, I am working on a Part 7 of the Halo Story series, covering the years between the Human Forerunner War and the Return of the Flood, but I also have other projects in mind. Those include a new video about Naomi 010, a video on the Insurrection, and something you've all been asking for for a very long time, a video series reviewing older Halo media starting quite appropriately with Halo The Fall of Reach. Now, let's just hope that I can stick to my word for once. Thanks for watching as always, and until next time, this has been Halo Canon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.